How does it look? You're clear now to me. Just wipe my nose and my trousers. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Just start with two huge, nasty nose (laughs) nose wipes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, ready? A little silence for editing. I'm going to leave that bit in. You should. Just wipe my nose and my trousers. You got to put that in there. Yeah. So good. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. It is morning. It's a Saturday morning. Yeah, yeah, well, it's afternoon, but... Joined again by my pal, Billy Wiz. It's like, it's morning for you, it's afternoon for me, but it's nighttime when you're watching this, so... That's exa- so there you go. So it's Getting whatever. Confused. It's, it's nothing yeah, yeah. time. We're warping time and space. That's what we do here, so... Perfect. So, after skipping last week, because of my, my hectic travel schedule... Yes, yes. My week in Florida, almost week in Florida... Mm-hmm. And um, you know we're back again, so we're going to take some some questions like we did last time. That I think that over, went over pretty well. No, yeah, we have. Well, we didn't. We haven't really got a topic because every time we pick one, the answer is just do it. So we figured <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And we <laughs> we just... started. We had the best of intentions with how do I yeah, dot yeah. dot dot. It always <laughs> ended with you just do it. Like so that <laughs> yeah. we kind of kind of wore that out a little bit. Yeah. The answer is always just do it. I know it's hard. I know it's scary. Just do it. So. What we've been doing the last couple of weeks is um, just asking for questions from our little Facebook group. And if you're not in the group, as always, follow the link and wherever you're watching the description and we'll join the group. Um, so we ask a question. Billy posted yesterday if anybody has any questions. So we, these are just kind of weekly Q&As. At this so time. You, like you prompted me, used your inif- initiative, said, why don't you post something in the group? So we did it early and mm. we got less less questions. How was that? What the hell is wrong with you guys? I, I think here's what I think <laughs> might have been the, the issue. I'm gonna uh, so it I'll have got lost. It got it lost did. in because it was so early and the group was so busy. Now it just got scrolled yeah, yeah. down. So you uh-huh. posted it in like the afternoon U.S. time, mm-hmm. where people are ostensibly maybe not looking at the group so much, and yeah. then it scrolled down. So, but it's all right. We got a couple of good questions, so we'll we'll run with them. We'll see where we end up. Yes, yes. Probably, Let's see what happens. Probably something completely irrelevant. <laughs> we are going to talk about. God knows, but yeah, that's yep. fine. <laughs> it's it's going to work out anyway. Um, I have a little last tip here. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm actually just drinking water. Okay. I was going to make green tea, but I decided nah, I'm just thirsty, so I just should drink water. So that's what I'm doing. Got, what do you got? I've got like English tea today. Oh. Chamomile bullshit. I'm going full, back to my full roots. Or, yeah, yeah. Earl Grey black. Mm. That's, how, that's what we know here. Like, no, no, because like tea with milk in. But you guys, you guys don't do that. No, no, we put milk in tea. Oh, do you? Yeah, like not green okay. tea. I don't know why. No, but no, like... no. Yeah, well, tea is just tea. I've had this conversation so many times. With Americans, probably, because we don't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's we, we, we don't understand. Number, we don't boil our water. I'm constantly berated. Like, why don't you Americans boil the freaking water before you make your tea? Like, we, All right. Ain't hey, nobody got time for that. Like, it's just hot enough. Like, it's so tea. what? Hot water out of the tap? That's how you make <laughs> no. <laughs> Serious. No, but I will be, be honest with you. There have been times when I made tea. I mean, it's hot. It would take the skin off your hands, but it's not <laughs> It's not actually boiling. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's close enough. Like, all right, I can just make tea with that. Then it's ev- evidently very offensive to my British friends to do that. But it's I knew tea thing. growing up. Triggered? Yeah, tea was something I knew as like if you were sick, you drank tea. Like otherwise... <laughs> We're not big tea drink, and and there would be right. milk in it. Yeah. So over here, if you if you're sick, you drink Glucosaid. Like that's the. I don't Glucosaid. think you've ever heard of that. It's I've like a gl- glucose kind of oh. fizzy shit. It's okay. like an energy drink, but it's not quite as bad as Red Bull. Or like Gatorade. Do you have Gatorade there? Or is it that's your version of Gatorade? I guess. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's like you know replenishes your electrolytes. Blah blah. That's the one. Yeah, them yeah. Electrolytes. So it's the same stuff. Those are better already. Yeah. yeah see, here we don't drink that. And again, we're off on some ridiculous topic. That's nothing with that. But Gatorade isn't for being long. sick. Gatorade is like when you're out there and you're smashing it, you know, because mm. you're just mm. so extremely athletic. Because mm-hmm. yeah, our advertising has to make. Talking of athletic, yes. I had a I had an alert come through because I got a new phone. I got the Galaxy S9, which is I'm like promoting that shit. That is good. Nice. I got an alert on there the other day saying I'd set a new target or set a new reach a new achievement. Four minutes of activity in twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, four minutes. My <laughs> four minutes. Like, like I'd reached a new level. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> that is making me laugh so hard. Four minutes, really? That's what it's yeah, all Yeah, seriously, four minutes. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> so, you yeah, sure? I've, been, I've been busy. You sure you got the energy to do this? You want to lay down a little bit after this four <laughs> it's minutes? A, it's a, I'm sitting. It's okay. I've done three minutes already, so I'm Check just going to lay on the sofa after this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> all right, let's get into some questions here. People. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, just take it from the top. So our, our man Kat from Romania, come on. Support groups like yours. What should be the limit on posts about anxiety symptoms? How do we encourage each other? And bullying. Well, I think he meant without bullying. I don't think. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. How do we bully people? I'm pretty. How sure. do we bully? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yet, of course, it 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 triggered a couple of you know responses about that. Like people would be, they wouldn't want there to be a limit. I don't. I think. I think in support groups like ours, there can't be a limit. You no, can't no. tell somebody like, okay, that's your fifth that's enough. About symptoms. Too bad. Too late. Yeah. Like we putting can't... you in the penalty box. Yeah, Go you on. can't have that. You can't have that. So I, I think I think there should be no limit. But I think the tone this is where the tone of the group matters and it, mm -hmm. why our group is, I think, so different. Because the the group really does have a tone. I think we've I made think... Yeah. I think this video is going to be mostly about the group, isn't it? It seems to be, because that was yeah, most of yeah, the yeah. questions. But yeah. I think they relate directly to to the whole recovery thing, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, and I think there can't be there can't be a limit. I would never impose a limit. Like, sorry, you've posted this too many times. But it depends on the tone of the group. Some groups are just, that you join, will just be all about that. So you could spend two years in that group talking about being dizzy, and people will yeah. be happy to, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I join you with you know me too. I'm dizzy too. And, mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. I think you've uh, got to ask yourself like, are you getting any benefit from posting these things? Like you set your own limit, knowing whether you're posting the same damn question over and over. Right. You know, but I think yeah. we discussed that in a bit. Well, yeah, we we do. Yeah, because there's another another question that comes up like that as well. Yeah, which is yeah. A similar kind of thing. Mm. And maybe we should skip to that one, and then we'll come back. Um, who asked that? It was it was Henry who asked about that. Mm -hmm. People who ask the same questions again and again and again and then actually then heather asked a related question too so we might as well we'll lump them all together what people asking the same question over and over again Fuck in me. the in a thread about how, the same question, how does yeah. that happen yes that is the definition of irony by the way <clears throat> a little programming note or at least a note right now because people ask me this all the time like what what do you do when you have a panic attack this this is what i do mm -hmm. right now I just in the last 45 seconds had a huge spike of whatever that is right right now. So are we, being, Fred, are we serious or I'm absolutely serious right now. Oh, no way. Yep. Yep. I feel so yes. I'll tell you right, right now. I feel, it's my turn. So okay. extremely derealized right now. Yeah, so I'm yeah, looking yeah. at you at the screen, but I'm not really looking at you at the screen and I'm trying to focus on my phone. And it's a little bit difficult and I feel like I'm on a boat, you know, that that rocky feeling. But yeah, yeah. this is what I do. No kidding, no shit. Really, in the last. If it's any consolation, I'm sitting here like sweating. I am well, literally sweating. But that's well, because I've done three minutes of activity. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's the four minutes of activity. It's coming back to bite you in the ass, see? That's, yeah, yeah. You're better not without activity. Trust me on this. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so when people want to know what it looks like when Drew has a panic attack, I won't say that I'm at a level 10 panic right now. I'm not. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I think just fatigue flying yesterday not sleeping the last week it was you know it was a lot going on yeah, yeah and yeah. so the travel blah 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 it's probably caught up to me a little bit mm -hmm. so it looks like this if anybody exactly. i don't exactly know if anybody would, i don't know if anybody would be able to tell but i am this is years and years and years of practice at yeah, this. yeah yeah it's um, like i guess it's because i said last week or not last week two weeks ago when we were doing ads i was feeling uncomfortable for nearly the whole thing but right. like looks exactly the same it looks like the same look, as all look of our videos videos. right yeah yeah right exactly so i just to to um expand on it a little bit like if i can what can i say that would help people now like there are still thoughts that enter my head of like it's a little bit chilly in my office here at the house mm -hmm. there's a heater there's a heater on the floor so what happens when this happens in your body like you do sweat a little bit you know mm -hmm. that's a natural part of the adrenaline dump so i'm sweating a little bit which means if it's chilly so now i feel the sweat evaporating so i'm a little bit cold my hands are a little bit cold. And uh, so I had that fleeting thought, like, get stop the video, get up, turn on the heater because you're cold. Mm -hmm. But that immediately gets immediately gets answered with. So what? You're cold. Just be cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 
I'm yeah. not, I didn't spend any time going through the chain that I just went through with you. Well, mm -hmm. adrenaline means sweat and it's cold and that means it's fine. But there's still, even many years into it, that flashing thought that says, mm -hmm. uh-oh, I feel cold and clammy. Yeah, yeah. It must do something about that. But it immediately gets answered with do nothing about that. Just keep talking to Billy here. So awesome start to the freaking video. Crazy, right? I was in yeah, no yeah. way like expecting that. And there have been times when I have felt panic or high anxiety would have thought oh, I should grab the vid grab the phone and <clears> the <throat> video because people always ask me uh -huh, about it. Uh -huh. and, and, and I haven't because it usually doesn't last that long. And even now it's like already kind of going away. Yeah, so yeah. what is it, four minutes or so since I mentioned that to you? Mm -hmm. But yes, so you actually just watched me have not a full blown panic attack, but near panic, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same mechanism that everybody watching goes through where that flash happens, sudden derealization, sudden depersonalization. Mm -hmm. My heart started beating really quickly. May my breathing might you might be able to tell I'm breathing a little bit differently, possibly. I'd have to yeah, I'd have to watch it back because yeah, yeah. I have no idea. You can't well you can't stop that. Like your breathing's gonna change a little bit because of the adrenaline and stuff. Mm -hmm. And just that feeling of like I this I should shut this down and and yeah, yeah. fix this, but better off that I didn't. So there you go, and it's already pretty much gone. So there you go, Jobs and didn't. yeah, so there you go. And I guess whatever. so. I will just add here. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know whether to. Yeah, I'm gonna no, put no, this yeah. on my channel. People that people that watch my video, the 60 second cure, yes, cure for panic attacks, like. The thing that I say in that is to do nothing. Like, it's just a video of 60 seconds of me doing nothing. Right. And that's exactly what you've just done. Nothing. nothing. But I get so much shit on that video. People saying, oh, you have you must have never had a panic attack and this, that, and the other. You've got no idea because right. you can't just do nothing. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to direct people to this young yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, <sighs> just because there was there were those same I've just I feel like I should try and explain as much as I can to be yeah, helpful. Yeah, no, perfect. Like those yeah, same yeah. thoughts still come in even now, 20 mm -hmm. years later, or even, you know, well, 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 many years into what I would I always describe as full recovery. Like, yes, full recovery. So right now I had an experience that if I go back to when you and I first met would have been a nightmare, would have ruined the rest yeah, of my yeah. day, it would have lasted mm -hmm. all day. You know, it would have been really bad. But. But the same thoughts still occur. And I talk all the time about people say, but how do you do that? How do you do it? How do you do it? You just do it. Like for me, it's not a like I know I, I know like, well, I could do nothing. It'd still be fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, because I know that there's nothing really wrong, which is because but I know that because of experience of doing this. I was so going to say, yeah, yeah. So many, so many times mm -hmm. I knew always knew logically that there was nothing wrong. But until mm -hmm. you have the experience of do nothing and still be mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. So there's that, but the same thoughts still come. How do I, people always say, well, I don't understand. And that's how we talk about like the meditation thing with Susan and learning that skill of knowing, mm -hmm. like, this is a skill of knowing where you want your, so I could have either put my focus on, I feel a little bit dizzy or focus on, I do I, why does yeah, yeah. Billy look so weird to me now? And why am I sweating? And why, well, people sorry, that came that. out wrong, <laughs> but you know, why, why do I feel this way? This is, oh my God, I could have focused mm -hmm. inward on all of mm -hmm. those things but at that point i can make the decision to say no my focus yeah, yeah. i want my focus to be on doing this task that we're doing and mm -hmm. i am able to over many 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 years it doesn't take it didn't take me years to get there but over many many opportunities to practice this and using meditation and things like that could put my focus from like oh it's screaming at me here and mm -hmm. i focus on it for a, a half a second and then like, nope, shoo, I'm going to put my focus right back here because that's where I want it. And I, yeah, yeah. and I know how to put it there. So in a way, that mechanism, when I say let it scream in your face, it was screaming in my face. But I can just – it's I don't know how to describe it. So I the could same just say, thing happened to me. I'm just yeah, yeah. putting my focus here now. That's where it's going to go because that's mm -hmm. where I want it. And I control where my focus goes. Yeah, yeah. And that skill, whether it's to help – you know, make this little episode pass really quickly, which it did, or mm -hmm. just in general, like in conducting business and, and solving problems, hugely, hugely, hugely valuable to be able to focus yeah, yeah. here, here, then here, then here, then here really rapidly. But mm -hmm. every time my focus is on something, it's fully on that, even if it's only for six or seven seconds, and then I can switch to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So, yeah, yeah. so many benefits to learning how to do this. So many. Yeah, I was, I was talking to Tina about it the other day because yeah. I was, 
I was on a call to her, but like a f- I think it was the night before. I was just sitting on the sofa. I was playing on PlayStation, as I do. But I was just getting like this mad extreme tension. It'd just be like a split second thing where I, I'd feel like, shit, this is a panic. Just like, I don't know. I can't explain the feeling that come over me, but it was okay. just like a split thing. Sure. But I, like I acknowledged it straight away and just like, I just thought to myself, I'm not going there. Because that would usually be the trigger for me to start yeah. escalating. And I'd build to a panic. But for some reason, like, it happened twice the other night. And I was just sat there. And I didn't do... I literally did nothing about it. I just thought to myself, right, like, that's the feeling that I get. Or that's the feeling I've had in the past when I've led to a panic. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to sit here and just, like, notice that that's just happened. But that's it. And just keep doing what it is you want to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just back to what I was doing. And just let's give that no more thought. Like yeah. that was just just a feeling that I experienced. I'm not gonna feed it with all this bullshit thinking. Right, right. Which makes perfect sense. That's yeah, kind of yeah, the way yeah. you do it. That's and I it. think the the last thing that I'll probably add on this, because like I don't even really feel it anymore. Everything's back to normal for the most mm-hmm. part. Is my heart rate is still a little. My Fitbit tells me what my heart rate is close, reasonably close. It's not a medical device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, if I when I first glanced at it before, when I said that I was in that, I wanted to see what it was. Mm-hmm. And it was it was 92 because I have a really low resting heart rate. So 92 okay. for just sitting in a chair talking to you is high, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be high. Like mm-hmm. that's what adrenaline does. Um, now I'm, I'm like in the 70s, which it'll go down into the low 60s in another mm-hmm. minute or two. But um, I think the sensations I felt, I feel the same sensations and have the same thoughts that everybody does yeah, yeah, yeah. they're still there it's just that they don't they truly don't matter i hope that that was really an illustration of how little it matters because people question yeah, yeah. all the time how could that possibly be mm-hmm. like it's, i'm it's guessing it's all about that second fear isn't it it is you can't, you can't stop that flash or the nope. feeling that you experience it's, it's just still, about it's where still you happens. go with it it's still yeah, happening yeah. and and even being useful on a plane like yesterday we were chatting while i was in the air like you and yeah, i yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, free in-flight Wi-Fi. woo um, Awesome. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, and I think even then, like, I'm still not a big fan of flying. So, yeah, you yeah. know, but the cool thing about it is, like, it's still, we hit a little bump here and there or whatever, and it still gives me that startle. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't, it even that, and that's just a simple phobia of flying. That's not a panic thing. Yeah, but even yeah. then, I don't, I don't, I don't let it steamroll. Like, okay, mm-hmm. that, that was uncomfortable. Next. Like on to the yeah, next yeah. moment, and it's mm-hmm. fine. So, so many lessons to learn and can that can be used, like in the rest of life, for what it's mm-hmm. worth. Mm-hmm. All right. So, awesome. we, there you go. That's, that's Congratulations, just, you got to witness. Awesome. This panic. is already the best episode we've it's had. The My back is literally dripping with sweat right now. <laughs> you want to like take a? We could edit. You want to kill no, the no. hoodie or whatever? It's fine. All no, right. my t-shirt's terrible underneath. Oh. Uh-huh. It's because I'll tell you why. It's because the heating that I've got in this house, it's crap, and you have to put it on overnight, and then it heats the house the next day. But it's pretty mild today, yeah. so I've had had the heating on overnight, and it's just like, oh, uh-huh. yeah, so there's storm. a sauna in your living yeah. room. Yeah, I hate yeah. when that happens. Beautiful. All right, so we were talking about uh, talking about symptoms in the group uh, or in a support group because I think a lot of people watching, whether they're in our group, our group or not. Yeah, or yeah, some yeah. sort of internet support group on mm-hmm. Facebook or wherever. Um, and so uh, Kat had asked about limiting that. What should the limit on posts be? And we said there, there should mm-hmm. be no limit. Um, and then da, 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 Henry said, how about a discussion about constantly asking the same questions or feels like statements when other members have already asked the same questions before and had it answered by others but still continue to ask? I think. And then um, – da, 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 <clears throat> Heather asks about, let's see, and then Heather asked about, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take ours next. So mm-hmm. let's answer that one. Asking the same questions over and over and asking questions that have already been answered. I think we see it. Like, especially- yeah, I think like when I've joined groups like unrelated to anxiety, the first thing that I would do would not be to search previous posts. I'd be going in there to ask my question. Sort of exactly so right. I think we can forgive people that have just joined and I, yeah, I think because they you, don't. You yeah, sure. they. Yeah, they don't know anything about like what Drew says. I mean, if, because probably ninety percent of the people that join don't watch that video that you've put as the announcement thing. That, they should. Hundred percent, they should. But, but they, I, but I, I know they're not that. thinking about that. They're so they're yeah. feeling scared out of their minds or whatever, and they want an answer to whatever it is that's bothering them that's caused them to 
join the group in the first place. Correct. Which is, I think, normal behavior. Yeah, we yeah. all do it. You know, mm. and like you said, you'll do it even in a group that has nothing to do with anxiety. Like, mm. answer my question. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, exactly. we could all be slightly lazy and self centered that way. I think it's just normal. That's what people do. That's what we do. Mm. And then in this situation, people come to a group like an anxiety support group. They are incredibly self centered. We talked about this. Not, and I don't yeah, mean yeah, that yeah. in a, like a personality defect kind of way. They're just all about how they feel and what they're thinking and getting help. Yeah, yeah, me, me, me. It puts you in me, me, me mode. Not like I said, not in a bad way. It's just that's mm-hmm. your survival mode in a way. So I think it's to be expected. And yeah, I understand yeah. that sometimes in a group, and, and I know why Henry is asking too. Like Henry's one of those people who's a little further down the road, and he stays around to help. Yeah, which which I so appreciate everybody that does that. 100%. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's huge. And I know that that can get frustrating. Like so, mm-hmm. it it can get frustrating. When, I think when, yeah. But the, the best advice would be to just scan over it. Just don't. Right. Like if so, you feel that you can't be constructive or if you feel that you're going to maybe yeah. offend somebody by saying like search the freaking post and that, just don't. I would say just yeah. that's my advice. I, I, it's true. Don't get, on, don't get on people's backs unless they keep doing the same thing. If they keep asking right. and keep asking and that. Again you know. and again and again. Yeah, and yeah. I, so I think we're going to see new people roll in. And, and I, I mentioned in one of my responses that remember that everybody goes through – at this point, I'm pretty confident saying this just because of the thousands of yeah, people yeah. I've dealt with. Like mm-hmm. there's there's stages, like you know the five stages of grief that they always talk mm-hmm. about and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, there's stages in this too. So the, news, the first stage is I don't know what this is. I'm convinced I'm physically dying. I must go see doctors. Yeah. And then – we usually see people like in the group or in these sort of support groups that have gone through that's they've done that part already. Mm-hmm. They might mm-hmm. still be kind of doing it, but now they're into the first stages of what do I do about this? Yeah, and yeah. It, it's all new to them. They don't, they've never heard of Claire weeks. They've never heard of cognitive behavior mm-hmm. therapy. They don't know what's going on and they're still focused on their symptoms. And so that's normal. Like, yeah, yeah. I went through that. You went through that. Holly went through that. Everybody went through that. Mm-hmm. So understand that you might be seeing a person join the group because the bigger the group gets, the more Facebook shows it to people, I think. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I'm seeing. It appears so. Yeah. Um, so we might be, you might be looking at a person who's in one of those early stages. They must go through that stage. Mm-hmm. And I think what happens in our group sometimes, and, and, and I, I think this happens, I, I don't have any real data because I haven't followed anybody specifically, mm-hmm. but I, I think some people who are in the early stages – they hang around for a while, they listen, they watch what goes on, they start to get the gist of it, and then they begin to participate. Or it's true that some people show up in that early stage. They are the ones that maybe ask the questions again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, they, yeah. May, they maybe get some feedback from people trying to be helpful, pointing them, trying to steer them in the right direction, mm-hmm. and, and they leave. They determine, yeah, like, yeah. this is not for me. Yeah. At least in our group. So I don't mm-hmm. think you're going to just be patient. And if you're one of those people that's hanging around trying to help, you, you can't help everybody. Yeah. So what I try and do, if it, if it helps at all, is I, if I see a per- post from a new person, especially if I've been busy and I haven't been that active, did someone else already answer it? And I'll just mm-hmm. let it go. You know, if yeah, no yeah. one else has answered, I will try and jump in and answer it mm-hmm. so that person doesn't feel left out. But uh, I, I think that's you have to just admit, understand that that's a stage that everybody goes through. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but I think if they keep, if they stay stuck in that stage, it's okay to try and steer them. Gently. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. And and I wanted to mention something else. I said it in my answer in the group. Like that is a thing when you're in one of these groups, <clears throat> and we've talked about this before: coaches and programs mm-hmm. and books mm-hmm. and things that you can buy. This is where it becomes a question for somebody like me, somebody like you, even someone like Holly. Like we're spending mm-hmm. our time on this. How much time can you spend? Like you yeah, want yeah. the group to be super productive. I want to see, like, mm-hmm. I want people to get help. I want to watch people progress and stuff. So it can be frustrating. And you think like, is there a better way to deliver this information? I get mm-hmm. suggestions all the time. Like, shouldn't there be an FAQ? There should be files. There should be videos. There should be. I suppose it would, it would be helpful if something was created, but then it's, it's more time, isn't it? It's, right. So it has to be a, like, I, I'm not going to do it. Right. I have to acknowledge that, like, while I may shit all over the anxiety coaches and people that are selling things, mm-hmm. like, I understand, Zeus, there has been times, believe me, where this group has challenged me 
to almost want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I should make an online course. Like, okay, if you're new to this, go and take this 10 hour course. Yeah. yeah. Like not because I want to buy a Lamborghini. Like I don't need that, but because you can, I'll buy you a Lamborghini. Here's here's public statement. (laughs) I will buy my friend Billy a Lamborghini if I'm ever able to. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes right. sense. It would rule out all those questions, wouldn't it? It would it, be a case of go do this and then come back to the group and then right. we'll share. And right, right. By all means, know. read yeah, and, yeah. and listen to stuff, but go do this five-hour mm-hmm. video course, whatever. But producing a five-hour video course or producing a book, mm-hmm. a three-hundred-page book, takes time, months. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of time. And so, how can somebody do that for nothing? So, like, it, it's a struggle to a certain extent because I have many, many people who are I like, agree. what? You should do that. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Well, you know, it takes time and then, then it would be a money it's thing. Tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky. It is. It is. Run, yeah. 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 Run DMC said that it's tricky and they were right. Tricky. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought that was worth mentioning. Then Heather yeah, no, says, can you. you guys talk about as someone who is further down the road in recovery or maybe already recovered how to help and not hinder those who are in the beginning stages? How can we be compassionate and empathetic? Um, but get off our white horses. I, I guess I know what, what she's saying. Like that. It, so you're a little bit further down the road. How do you help mm-hmm. somebody without sounding like you're being preachy? Yeah. Yeah. It's another good question. I got a good answer for that one. I don't nope. cause I'm just I'm <laughs> unapologetic, preachy and aggressive. So I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. Not- well, I, because I've been so I've been down there, but I've also been up there so often, like I flip flop between good and bad. So I just I'm just the same wherever I am. Like it makes no difference. The answers are still the same, I guess. Yeah. There's no sugar coating. Is it? That's the. I think there is no sugar coating. So, Heather, to answer your question, if you're watching, I know she's going to watch. Um, of course. Of course. Um, I know Heather will watch to answer the question. Like you just answer it the best way you can. I think the best that you can do. And, and when you're trying to help other people, that's a huge sign to me. Mm-hmm. Like they say the last step in recovery is using what you learned to help someone else avoid what you went mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe that to be true. So if you find that you're in the group and you're actually starting to offer advice or in any group, whether it's ours or any other, like that's mm-hmm. a really good sign. That's a really yeah, good yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think you just do it the best way you can. Don't never, no personal attacks. Um, relate your own experience. It's that's, probably that's the what best I was going to say. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Right? Advice from, from experience. That's, that's what makes this group so different. I think like yes. there's no, nobody's learned anything here or nobody's preaching from textbooks and stuff. Right. This is, it's life. That's what like they've if, actually done. Yeah. Like, yeah. because I know there's a question about, does this method work that we're talking about? Like, yeah. do that next. There's experience to say that. Yes, it does. Yeah. So, and I think one of the things that we see a lot and, and Heather, you specifically, which is a great question. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Heather's posts when she, she digs in and offers somebody advice or, or answers someone's question. Mm-hmm. she is almost always relating it to her own experience. Like I did yeah, this yeah. and it didn't work. Yeah. So I changed to this and it is working. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think there's never a problem saying that I've, I've very rarely have ever seen anybody say, you know, be condescending or, or mean. Like, I think it's more valuable to the person that's posted the question in the first place. If they get a response from somebody that can completely relate to it. Yes. You like know? that, I had that problem and I did this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or, I used to do what you're doing and it didn't work, so I changed to doing this instead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's always. I don't think there's ever anything wrong with with doing that. And mm-hmm. honestly, at least in our group, I, I encourage that because uh, otherwise, it's just like, oh, it's okay. We understand this is so hard. You're a warrior. Yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It's okay um, to not be okay. A lot, a lot of this, a lot. Of, right, it's okay. No one understands, and and that doesn't get people anywhere. And that's what makes us different. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys just keep doing what you're doing. Heather, you're doing fine. Um, should we then go to the... I'm just reading through here. We just Billy... got another one. We just got another one. We did, okay. Um, Billy uh, Cross okay. asks, does anyone what? have any questions for today's video? <laughs> As a matter of fact, Billy. That was me. Go on, what's your it. question? <laughs> you're lying. You're on That's... air. I think before... Randy asked about bumps in the road and, and sort of setbacks and bad periods. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, we should, we'll talk about that for sure. Let's talk about Donna has asked several times. I want to answer my friend Donna here, how to create a vision. Like, do you have a, 
I, I, Don, I'm not 100% sure what that question really is, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like that, um, I'm not sure what the vision means. Do you have like a vision of. I am I, Cognitive, I, but I'm I, not discussing him on air. <laughs> this is a, a family <laughs> big podcast, thank you. Uh, most times. So, like, do you, I, I, is it having a vision of what you think your life should be or visualizing free? I'm not sure. Yeah, but, yeah. Is it like visualizing goals or. Or is it like the end game, like where you want to be? Maybe. And I, I, I'm, John, I'm sorry that I'm not answering this very well, but I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure of the question. But I can, I think, a vision. What's useful about having a vision? I think one of the things is we get so wrapped up. When you're in the thick of it, you're wrapped up minute by minute in how you feel. How do I feel mm-hmm. this minute, next minute, next minute, almost second by second sometimes? Mm-hmm. So it can be hard to change that and think down the road. Like, mm-hmm. where, where do I want to be in, you know, what should I be doing that will be helpful to me tomorrow as mm-hmm. opposed to how do I escape these feelings right this second? Yeah, yeah. So that's the only thing I could think of is, like, it is helpful to be able to think in the, in the terms of the future. Mm-hmm. But the future sometimes, if you're in the thick of it and you're just going minute by minute right now. Which I think in many instances, Don is so open on the board. So I don't think she'd mind me saying this. I know she is. Um, just trying to get through each minute, each urge to check blood pressure or, or you know, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. That the vision I would urge you to have if you're stuck in a minute by minute is just start learning to think five minutes ahead of time. That's the only yeah, vision yeah. you need right now. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need a grand vision of what I will look like when I'm fully recovered and what life I will live and live my best life and yang, 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 yang. You don't need yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you're good most of the day, then fine. Start thinking about what's going to happen next week or in a month or what your big life plan mm-hmm. is going to be. But if you're stuck second by second, minute by minute, dealing with your symptoms, like in that mode where you're living second by second and focused inward, just try and think five minutes down the road. That's the only vision. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. There was something that I read something about like having goals and stuff like that, and it, like how people that are chasing those dreams, they're never actually ha- happy. Because like they're constantly chasing something else. Where if yeah. you just like if you're happy with how you are now, like just live in the moment. Mm-hmm. I guess it's the the mindfulness stuff of being like present now. Like yes. this is what this is what we've got. This is who we are. Like we'll end up where we end up, man. Right. Shit happens. So just That's that's true. Some some people would say like a vision is a bad idea. That's a whole, that's a philosophical like, yeah, discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not bad. It's not a bad idea to have like motivations and goals that you want to reach. But it, I think the longer that you're chasing them, like you're not going to be happy until you reach that goal. So yes. what, like I'm happy now because fuck goals. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's the way I'm trying to think about things. It's just like whatever. It well, is what I, it is. I think Donna's question about vision, and to me, just to reiterate, I would think just try and think a little further down the road than you're currently thinking now. So if you're stuck minute by minute, don't worry about what's going to happen in 10 years. Don't try and build a grand vision. I must visualize my recovered life. Just try and visualize what's going to happen five minutes from now. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what can I do right this minute that will benefit me in five minutes or 10 mm-hmm. minutes, which is usually the opposite of what you're doing? Like it's, it always yeah. comes down to that, but mm-hmm. but I, I think that leads to – it kind of plays into Danny's question also, which was can you talk about following a structured recovery plan versus doing it alone and entirely unplanned? Um, so a vision – we could talk about a vision, and then they just went into a conversation about Australia Day, so that's <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> I guess we don't need to talk about that. But a vision <clears throat> and plan might be similar. Like, we should should try to talk about that. Let's talk about that one, and then we'll go back to Randy setbacks, and then we'll talk about the big question, which is, is this effective? Um, So having a structured plan versus winging it. What have you done? Have you been kind of – have you winged it, you think? Have you gone back and forth over time, I think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've tried plans. I've tried winging it. I've tried everything, pretty much. The only thing I haven't tried is just persistence. Yeah. I think that's the key to it. Like, I've, there's no real structure to what I'm doing now. I'm just doing something every day, whatever it is. Like, I spent last weekend tidying the house completely top to bottom. Yeah. So, like we talked about, just doing something. Yep. And it could, you know, I was completely out of my own head. So, it was, it's just been refreshing. Like, I went to the retail park here, into a big sports shop the other night. Mm-hmm. It's only the second time I've ever been in there. It's, like, been there freaking 15 years. Yeah. Like, just doing stuff just not sitting being in my own head all the time right 
I don't know, but there's no specific plan. Like, I haven't got, I must do this, or this is my goal. Like, I've right. got no real goals at the moment. It's just, as long as I'm doing something, yeah. it's better than me doing nothing. It's true, but I, I would argue that maybe that's a plan. Like, you made that shift a month or two ago between yeah, yeah. I will sit and wait and then go try and do a giant exposure and then mm-hmm. sit and wait again. Like that yeah, was yeah. Your, that was sort of your plan, and now your plan is like just do something every day. Yeah, yeah, it's a plan, but it's not like because if you remember, like I made the list of five things years ago yes. and did, yep, and that yep. was like I, I see that as more structured because I was attempting these things every day. Yes. Whereas now it's just like I, as long as I do something and challenge myself and make myself feel those feelings right. where I need to challenge myself, then that's that's where I see it, <clears throat> which I think is, is helping. So that shift in strategy. So to, to try to direct Danny's uh, specifically address Danny's question. Then she followed up because she had a conversation with Rebecca here. Um, keen aware. I noticed uh, vaping was mentioned. Uh, in what? Yes. They were talking about vaping. And I guess in, in another thread, on Re- I want to mention Rebecca's video too, because I think it was really good. Um, it seems a lot of people don't know or don't have a graded exposure plan. She's talking about, graduated yeah, yeah. Call, in the u.s we call it yeah. graduated exposure mm-hmm. or have been or have been made aware of their safety behavior and their avoidance mm-hmm. like they don't they don't know so we're we're talking we're painting in very broad strokes in, we, in these videos and we talk in the group in very broad strokes but we rarely ever get to the very specifics of this and mm-hmm. so i think she makes a good danny makes a good point here like there there does need to be at least a strategy if not a plan some people do better with like okay today i will go to the grocery store tomorrow i will do this and that's fine yeah, if, yeah. You're, if you're that person that, that's a good thing to do but i think more so than that a plan of exactly what you will do is understanding the the systematic nature of this process so mm-hmm. even though you know billy you don't really necessarily have a plan that you're following mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. do have a strategy now that's different than your old one yeah 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 and that strategy definitely plays into the systematic nature of the process that mm-hmm. everybody every, – we're all living in the same system. Yeah, yeah. Whether you know it or not, we're all living in the same system because we all mm-hmm. have the same brain functions. But um, – so your strategy, you got to pick a strategy here that acknowledges that this is a systematic process. It's a gradual process. Mm-hmm. And we always talk about taking small steps often as opposed to big steps once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that awareness that says of what you're actually doing, you're extinguishing safety behaviors mm-hmm. and building and putting other behaviors in its place. So just saying like, okay, I'm going to do my exposures. Do you understand what the exposures are actually accomplishing? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think mm-hmm. many people don't. I mean, yeah, they just, mm. it's just a general idea of like, well, I know I have to face the fear. So a general concept must face the fear, but then they wind up white knuckling through it, just uh-huh. just bearing it, um, or not even understanding the things in their lives that they're avoiding. So mm-hmm. it, this is not a. We should probably just do. We could probably do a series of videos just on this. Yeah, yeah. Like, really what, get down. Yeah. Well, we did one like how intricate. to make a re- yeah how to make a recovery plan, but the real actual nuts and bolts of like what are you actually accomplishing. Mm-hmm. So when you go out and go for a walk that is difficult for you, what are you actually doing in that walk? The mechanism yeah, yeah. that you're following. Because understanding that probably matters. And it would change people's perspectives on the process mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. It's so much more than just face your fear, which sounds like one of those amorphous like be a warrior and go toward the fear and be courageous. Yeah, you need that yeah, yeah. to it do it. It gets tiring. It gets tiring just doing that. And that's it, why people lose motivation a lot. That, that's exactly right. Because sometimes mm-hmm. I think it's because Danny's probably right. They don't understand that this is a graduated, systematic, sequential thing. And what are mm-hmm. the nuts and bolts that are actually happening? You're, you're understanding what you're doing to avoid and learning to not do that and replacing that behavior with another behavior, mm-hmm. replacing certain thoughts with other thoughts. So every single time out, you're accomplishing something. And maybe they – they don't understand that. Like, I'm just working so hard and how come it's not getting better instantly? Why do I still feel this way? Mm-hmm. And maybe because of that. So that's a, that's more of a topic than I even thought. Originally. It's a, yeah. It's a what to do and why, why that's are you doing this? What is yeah, happening yeah. here? And then that's mm-hmm. like the nuts and bolts of cognition and learning theory, which we can to- uh, be thrilled to talk about because mm-hmm. I'm a big like cognition geek. So I, I like that stuff. <laughs> I think about that all day. I'll just so, sit here saying, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, We'll have to do one at one point where you and me and Holly are together because Holly, mm-hmm. Holly will help with that too, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, See, I'm doing it now. Mm-hmm. You're doing it now. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ASMR vaping sounds. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I actually found an ASMR watch review the other day. Somebody yeah. actually did a review of a wristwatch. You know, yeah. That was an ASMR review. Anyway, there you go. So, Danny, thank you for that question. You prompted a, probably a whole series of videos. That's good. I think to answer the question quickly, like it's better to have – you need some sort of strategy. You don't necessarily have to have a daily plan that might be helpful. Mm-hmm. And if you're working with a therapist, you will have a daily plan that yeah, yeah. will give you specific tasks to do. Mm-hmm. Therapists will ask you to identify what do you want to accomplish, what do we want to work on, and then here are tasks you will do as your homework before you come mm-hmm. back and see me again. So there will be a structured plan. But if you're on your own, you need at least a strategy and an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. And, and what you're trying to accomplish isn't a big, giant <clears throat> recovery. Like recovery, yeah. you know, you, you need to break it down to little goals. So – We'll, we'll talk about that in some other time. Ah, so where else are we here? <laughs> Jumping back and forth. Sorry, guys. Come on. Randy, talk, Randy talked about, uh, hey, Billy, I think it would be helpful to discuss bumps in the road. I know mm-hmm. you guys don't like the term setbacks. Uh, I would, don't mind. We could say setbacks if you want. It would yeah. be helpful uh, to people a, a little bit further down the road in recovery. How do we deal with the ups and downs of recovery? I know it would be helpful to me as I've been an up and down cycle from hell lately. Uh, curious if you guys might have an idea what type of things might set off bad periods. It It is a common thing. Stress. A- everybody goes through it. Stress. What does it for me? Stress and sleep and. Yeah. I guess there's a number of things. It's how you respond to those setbacks in it. It's whether you can deal with whatever's causing it or if you can identify if there is something. Because sometimes, like, you just go into these setbacks without any reason. You don't, like, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, the ver- the vertigo thing for me, that was, like, a bit of a setback. And I see yeah. people talking about that again. Like, mm-hmm. somebody else had vertigo. It's, like, sometimes you don't know or if something comes out of the blue, just right. deals with. And then it's how you deal with that, those feelings. It's how you interpret them. Are you going to add, like, oh, shit this is going to bring more anxiety or is it, Oh shit, like this is happening. Let's deal with it. Well, (laughs) I'm so knowledgeable. No, that that's a really good answer. So it's not so much the setback or, or the bad time. It's how you deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I I think my my experience is like people get into this, what they call a setback. Sometimes often it's because they were expecting like they're doing really well and then suddenly they feel mm-hmm. things they haven't felt for a couple of weeks or a mm-hmm. month and then they feel like, oh, no, that went backwards. Yeah, yeah. So often a setback is defined by the individual experiencing it as I was doing so great and now mm-hmm. I'm having a week where I feel so anxious. Mm-hmm. But that's not a setback like because the goal is not to not feel anxious. Mm-hmm. So often the setback – I'm talking about two things. Number one, the stress that you're talking about and then this, the nuts and bolts. Nice fucking fly of uh, like a it's setback. Always one. It's always one. Pisses I think it's the off. same one. He waits and then he comes I back next it. Saturday. I've killed it so many times. <laughs> That's disturbing. That's like some it sort is. of undead zombie fly. It just yep. has a vendetta against you in some way. <laughs> Only in England. <laughs> Only in England. <laughs> zombie undead flies. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's important if you feel like you're going through a rough period. Usually it's because of how you feel. And remember mm-hmm. that the goal here is never to not – it's not to feel different. That's the secondary outcome. I mean it's the outcome everybody wants. But the but your target here is not to change the way you feel. It's the way – it's to change the way you react to how you feel. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing great and you're out and you're pushing it and like all of a sudden you're in the supermarket and you're, you're getting back to work and you're doing things and you went to a birthday party and all these cool things are happening – and usually the happiness is I'm doing it and wow, I didn't even panic. Like, okay, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It means mm-hmm. you are making progress. But then you have a bit of a panic and then you start to feel anxiety for a few days and suddenly it's like, oh, I'm backwards. Mm-hmm. But, but you're not backwards because yeah, yeah. those things must happen. And when they happen, you, the progress is measured by do I just go back and sit on the sofa again until I feel better? Mm-hmm. Or do I just keep going even though I feel this way because I'm less afraid of how I feel this time? Yeah, yeah. And Realizing I, that you're in no no danger. Right. So this it's never a you know if your goal if you're if you think you're getting out and doing this work because you will change how you feel, then you have mm-hmm. the wrong goal. Like mm-hmm. you need to be doing the work even when you feel badly so that you change the way you react to how you feel. That's how. Yeah. And, yeah. and I. I can only just say, well, trust me, after many, many years of this, like, and many, many, many millions of people who do this process, 
Like those things will happen sometimes. You just watched me have a near panic attack on video mm-hmm. 15 minutes ago, whatever it was. Like that can still happen to me. But the difference is who cares? Like, yeah, yeah. and so that's your goal. You're trying to get to where that, where you can have a panic attack on video while you're doing this mm-hmm. thing and no one would even mm-hmm. know. That's your goal, not to never panic again mm-hmm. or not to ever feel anxious, you know, anxiety again. Yeah, but then, yeah. But then the other thing that could set up the setback is, like you said, stress. Just people lose track of, like, there's the anxiety disorder that you're working on. And mm-hmm. there's just being alive. Like, yeah, yeah. your boss is an asshole or, like, you lose your job yeah, or you're having money problems. Huge. Me too. He's, he's <laughs> um, you have money problems or your kids are driving you crazy, whatever it is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Some, we forget that, like, life events get entangled in this disorder. So, like, mm-hmm. oh, I hate my mother-in-law. She makes me panic. No, she doesn't. Like, mm. your in-laws don't make you panic. Your boyfriend doesn't make you panic. Your boss doesn't make you panic. They are stressors. Mm-hmm. And when you're in the midst of an anxiety disorder, you panic over that. Yeah, yeah. You turn life stress. And as you go further down the road, those things will begin to separate and it'll get clearer. Like, mm-hmm. I, I have an anxiety disorder. I'm afraid to drive. And my sister-in-law just said something nasty to me, and I hate her. Those are two different things. Mm-hmm. This will you always happen. It? Well, <sighs> do I have to name names? <laughs> uh, I don't want to name any names. Um, nah. You know, but they're right. Like, these are two different things. Like, there's yeah, life yeah, stress, yeah. and then there's this thing that you're working on. Mm-hmm. And, and they first start like you can't separate the two, and then over time they will begin to. Like, yeah, I think yeah, that that's where I'm at. So you can differentiate between the two. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So it's it you'll feel like oh I had a really crappy week here for whatever reasons in life. Maybe you were ill or something happened, but mm-hmm. you won't tie that into this is an anxiety setback. That yeah, will yeah. get better as you go. So mm-hmm. the advice is just keep going. Remember what the goal is. If you start mm-hmm. to feel badly again after having two really good weeks or three really good weeks or a month or two that are good and you feel bad this week, just keep doing what you've been doing the past three months. Yeah, even yeah. even though you feel that way. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter that you feel that way. So that, that's my big setback advice. I think you're you're doing that now, it seems. I don't know. But it, <laughs> it, it seems to me like you are. Like it's been uh, a while now since I heard you say, like, I don't know, man. I'm just, you know, you would every once in a while you'd say that to me. Like, I don't yeah, know. It's, a, it's not to say that I'm not yeah, I'm it's not to say that I'm not experiencing those same feelings. It's just that I'm not Right. Let it, I'm not letting it escalate at the moment. But yeah. that's not to say that it won't, like it might do after this video. It might. Or during. But, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's never... that it, I've got a shift in my mind. It's like I'm just not focusing on how I've been feeling or what what I'm doing is how it's making me feel. Like I'm not thinking about it. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. Like the biggest the biggest thing for me at the minute is anticipation. Like right. with the sport, sports shop the other day. I went with my dad and my daughter and we were just sat in the car outside the place and we probably sat there for like five, ten minutes and they were both like hammering me. Come on, like get out of the car. You got to come in. Yeah. Like my, my daughter was saying, what is it you're scared of? And I was like, no idea. My dad said, what's the difference between the pub like that I went to with Ben and going in here? Right. And I was like, there is no difference. Like the difference is in how I'm thinking about this task now. That's right. the only difference. It doesn't matter what it is. But then, like, it's so annoying. After about 10 minutes, I got out of the car, walked to the sports shop, walked in, and that was... I felt so much better as I got in the shop than I did sitting in the car. Yeah. And, like, it just proved to me that, like, that was the peak. The peak of my anxiety was before I got out of the car. And as yeah. soon as I made that decision to just do it, whatever, Yeah. I noticed the huge weight lifted, and I was just walking around a frigging sports shop that I hadn't been in for years. And it was not like a major disaster. Yeah, no, right? like I was, I was still feeling like I'm not saying that I'm freaking cured and my only yeah. problem is anticipation. It's not because I still felt wobbly and weird, but like made no difference. Yeah, I still yeah. feel wobbly and weird when I'm standing doing the washing up at the sink, you know. So what difference do it make? That's a um, that is like a huge leap forward, you know, like yeah, where yeah. where the anticip the anticipatory anxiety is bigger than the event itself that's that's where i'm at on a consistent basis that's a giant leap forward it's a huge leap forward so i because i think a lot of people watching would say they have both like they they're dreading what they have to do and then when they go and do it it's really difficult too and they're they're panicking right it's just as bad and so what will happen over time is the event will become easier and easier the anticipation Mm -hmm. it stays lingers longer than anything else yeah 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 definitely 
that's really that's really really good it's really really good so uh yeah moving yeah. forward yeah and like and you don't let it get you down like even when you have a, a bit of a wobble you don't let it get you down you don't you're not retreat you don't retreat anymore mm, mm. no i'm not seeming to no I'm you just, just you're just continuing yeah, yeah. to execute yeah, yeah. this and I've, got shit, I've got so much shit going on at home, like freaking money troubles, and yeah, yeah, like it's it's crazy at the minute, like stress. Yeah, but but I can yeah. tell the difference. It doesn't mean I'm anxious. It means I'm stressed. Like that's oh, the difference. That is such a big deal. That is such a big deal. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I don't even know if you realize that what a big deal that is. That's what we were just talking about. Setbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's it. That you know, life like stress, like life anxiety and stress is becoming separated from the actual agoraphobia mm -hmm. if you will yeah yeah mm -hmm. so very big deal so uh randy i, I, was really I am question. a big deal you are a big deal <laughs> dude there's no question in my mind <laughs> so the, those statements you just made are really huge and for anybody watching like that's what will happen yeah yeah like because uh, me and ben are supposed to be going to the zoo next monday right. so like i haven't been there since i was early 20s so that's going to be crazy but i'm not i'm not nervous about it now at all Right. I know that I, I will be the day before. I'll be crapping myself about it. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm ninety nine percent sure that I'll be able to go and do it, and I, I'm all, I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm going to feel weird while I'm there, and I'm going to have dizzy spells and all that kind of crap. But I just accept that now. Yeah, like it's it's just become normal, and don't let it stop me from because there's going to be times when I'm walking around the zoo that I'm going to have a freaking smile on my face as well. You know what I mean? Right, right. So rather than miss out on that because I might feel dizzy for five minutes no yeah not anymore because you you have like <laughs> you're talking about the nuts and bolts like you have literally taught your brain that it doesn't matter if you're dizzy like yeah yeah it, i can just stop what i'm doing just actually what happened yeah 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 mm -hmm. whereas i know that that dizzy thing used to be such a a, a showstopper like that said i'm dizzy must leave like, yeah yeah right yeah. it would stop it would stop me even attempting through right. fear of that happening right and now mm. you are no longer afraid of that happening. So this, you're witnessing here, our friend Billy in the UK, witnessing the actual nuts and bolts of what happens. Mm. Like yeah, those, yeah. Are, literally for those of you who must dig deep into it, there was a whole discussion mm -hmm. in the group, like these are new neural pathways being mm -hmm. wired, literally in your brain. So there was a pathway that said dizzy means danger. And there's a new pathway that says dizzy means I don't like this, but I can still do it. And sooner or later, there's a pathway that will literally say, biologically, physiologically say, dizzy, who cares? You don't even have a dizzy pathway anymore. I thought it was the CBD that was doing it. Probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> Shall I edit that bit out? <laughs> uh, I, I, really, really funny. Probably. <laughs> oh, God. A constant state of sedation. <laughs> Man, we may want to edit that. <laughs> think about it mm -mm. <laughs> so anyway there you go i'm kidding um, by the way i am kidding if anybody's watching yes it's not the, the cbd for the record um so let's get to there was another question was it the question was from you said we got another one that was daniella uh uh catalin just oh asked, i didn't see that one he commented on something okay on my bit you know where i said does anybody have more questions I yes oh he, question. he responded to that yeah i'd have to read Anyway, fresh. Daniela, I don't know if this was already answered. Um, maybe it's too broad a question for how to desensitize. It, it is a very broad question. I mean, constant tension, no wonder I'm dizzy, meditation, yoga, they help for a short time. I think we just sort of answered it to, in a way. Like, mm -hmm. you were so sensitive to the specific symptom of being dizzy or off mm -hmm. balance. And now you are much less concerned about that. So I, you are yeah, literally yeah, it's, desensitized. It's mad, because, yeah, because, like, I think the problem that people usually have is like, how do I stop feeling dizzy? And I'm right. not doing, I'm not doing that anymore. You're not trying like, to not be. Yeah, 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 that. exactly. Yeah. I'm just like embracing the wackiness. Embrace like the I, suck. Yeah. I was sat in on the, sat in, I was sat in on the sofa the other night and I was feeling like that boat thing that you was on about where you feel like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I was just sitting there and I was actually doing this. Like, let's fucking make it worse. Like, just, because it's nothing. Cause it's exactly the same feeling. Right. That's what I'm doing now. Just, Good. Could you imagine that though? Like, a, you know, six months ago, a year ago, no, or like when you were been at your worst? Scary. Yeah, you just add right. more tension, and then you start right. noticing right. it even more. Mm. So, Daniela, the answer to your question—it is a very big question, and we could talk about that for hours and hours. But you actually, first of all, you're not trying to stop feeling that way. Yeah. How you desensitize is you feel that way and be as non-reactive to it as possible. Mm -hmm. 
and I know it's super scary and it's dizzy and all that stuff, and, but you're trying to make it go away. So when you say meditation and yoga help for a short time, you're probably saying I feel better for a short time, but then I feel, I feel these, this tension again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So tension is, is a thing. Like when you're under constant tension, which you are when you're in the mm -hmm. thick of this problem. Um, but you just, you're, you're not trying to change the way you feel. You're just trying to change the way you react to how you feel. And that literally will retrain your brain to not worry about those feelings. Mm -hmm. So if you've watched and watched Billy tell a story about being dizzy, by the way, dizzy, um, somebody posted, I don't remember who, who it was recently. And I think it was yesterday, um, that their neurologist had said mm -hmm. to them, uh, I guess, you know, they were talking about that dizzy. I, I'm, I'm dizzy. I yeah, feel like yeah. they were talking about being, feeling like they were on a boat, I believe. Yeah. And their neurologist had said, if you can stand there with your feet together and put your arms apart and uh -huh. you can actually stand there, you do not mm -hmm. tip over and hit the ground, mm -hmm. then there's nothing wrong. That's anxiety dizzy. And uh -huh. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, but here's the problem. When people get dizzy or that anxiety dizzy and off balance, the last thing they will do is to stand there st still and put their arms out to yeah. invite more dizzy. Yeah, the problem is if somebody does that and they still feel dizzy, they're going to think, "Oh shit, it's not anxiety." That right, means... right, but but that's but it's he, the neurologist didn't say if you could put your hands out and stop feeling dizzy. He didn't say that. He or she, it could oh, be a, if you can just stand there. And if do you that. can do that, if you can do that task and stand there with your arms straight out and your feet on the ground, and you do not literally topple over or mm -hmm. stumble into the wall, you can stand there. It doesn't have to be perfectly still, but if mm -hmm. you do not fall down or spin and wind up on the ground or bump into the wall because you literally mm -hmm. can't stand up, then you are not dizzy. Like yes. you are just feeling that anxiety symptom. So that's not a thing to make dizzy go away. That is yeah, a yeah, great, yeah. great thing. But what you're doing, if you feel dizzy, what most people do, I know what I would feel that, would be close mm -hmm. your eyes and tuck in, right? You're trying yeah, to get yeah, yeah. Most mm -hmm. people react to dizzy that way. React to dizzy by putting your arms out. And if mm -hmm. you really wanted to get crazy, you could probably put your head back. But yeah, that's yeah. much di more difficult for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so that is how to desensitize that. So to address the symptom of dizziness, that's a cool test. Yeah, yeah. And it adds objectivity. So instead mm -hmm. of like this feels like, feels like, feels like, nope. The only fact you need to know is I'm standing upright with my arms stretched out and I'm not falling over or not crashing into the wall. Yes. So that's that's objective. And you're also desensitizing yourself to being dizzy by doing that. Mm -hmm. because you're inviting more dizzy in yeah yeah so daniela that's how you desensitize just let it be there and don't react so there you go what did cat say should we ask him for, because we're going to get into rebecca's Carol. question it's the biggest one he, he said you said he responded to when you asked if anybody has more questions he said, I, uh, I how toxic pleasing people and being a yes man is for your anxiety and recovery how toxic pleasing people and being a yes man is for your anxiety and recovery. Being a yes man. I mentioned yeah. that years ago. Do you remember when I mentioned that? I was being a yes man. Like when somebody, if my ex was saying, do you want to go here, there, whatever, I was just saying yes. To everything. And my, my daughter had a Viking day at school. Do you remember that? Uh, I remember talking about this. Ago. Viking day, yes. I do remember. But she never, my daughter stopped asking me if I wanted to go to any like school events or anything like that because she knew it would always be a no. But this, for the for some strange reason, she just decided to ask, will you come to Viking Day? And I was like, yes. And I went, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the answer to the question is. How I, is being a yes man? It's good and bad. bad. It, it is. Well, it's good or bad. And I, Well, yeah, okay. So I think what, what the question is, is. Right. The question, I think, if I'm reading it correctly is, or if you're reading it correctly, because I'm not Probably literally not. reading it. Um, how toxic is that? Like, if you're trying to please people and be a yes man all the time, is that uh, bad for your anxiety? Well, <laughs> that's like a more of a personality oh thing. That goes back to that same thing where we have this to separate. Why Drew reads the comments and I don't, you see. <laughs> well, we'll be answering all kinds of questions. <laughs> Up next, how to change the oil on your Subaru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, let's talk about that. Yes, man. The and I think that's there are two different things. That's that thing where like life stuff and the disorder. Like sometimes there are people out there who are more prone to want to please people and, mm -hmm. and make people happy and be a yes man. Like that's just your personality type. Or it's your propensity in life to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. 
you could do that and it might cause you some issues in life, but it doesn't have to make you afraid to go to the supermarket. So we have mm-hmm. to separate these things. Like if you, if you are that way and you don't like being that way, cause it makes you unhappy or it ruins, you know, or it, it degrades the quality of life for you in some way, then mm-hmm. by all means you can work on changing that. But yeah, yeah. If, if you're okay, because you're happy when you make people happy, and it and you don't go into a tizzy if you don't make them happy. I'm like, if that's okay for you, then that's okay for you. But understand that being a people pleaser does not make one agoraphobic mm-hmm. or, or does not give somebody panic disorder. Like these are different things. So, uh, I mean, I think it's fine to ask those questions and work on those things if they're important to you. But I, I, I don't think you can say, well, my problem here is that I'm trying to please people. Mm-hmm. Although I will say that if you, it probably makes it more difficult if you are a people pleaser or one of those or a yes man, a yes person, gender neutral. <laughs> no. See how I caught myself there? Yeah, good. Um, I don't I don't want to get boycotted. Um mm-hmm. toxic masculinity and all. The, <laughs> the if you are a yes person and a people pleaser, you probably feel like this is more of an insurmountable problem than other people do. Because you are not only feeling like I this thing is keeping you down, but you're also feeling like you're ruining everyone else's shit. And I I think we see that. Like I ruined my family's thing. I'm ruining my kids. I'm ruining my husband. I'm ruining Mm -hmm. my wife. I'm ruining this. I'm like, no, because you want to please people. And so when you can't, you, you judge yourself really harshly, that could be an impediment. Like you got to get past that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's my best answer to that question. Like in a way, well, this is you. about yeah it's about you it's not about anybody else like mm-hmm. don't worry about what everybody else is thinking about your anxiety disorder you have to work on you mm-hmm. and they will come along for the ride whether they like it or not like, yeah yeah that's it yeah and if you and if you take the ride and you're successful they'll be happy for you people mm-hmm. in your life that that love you so there you go so that's my answer to that question yes man <laughs> <laughs> so just, so good. all right let's tackle rebecca's question let's do uh, it and we're going to talk about Rebecca's question. We're going to talk about Rebecca's video that she made. I don't, I don't think she'll mind. She put up a video. So it was really, really, really good because about my, my post about hiding behind trees. So. I'll make an admission. You didn't I say didn't, it. I didn't watch all of it. I watched up until she vaped and then that's, I had to switch it off. That's it. I'm hanging up this call. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the vape. She stole your vaping. By the way, no vaping in any videos. That's Billy's. It's yeah, yeah. I believe it's copyrighted. I'm not sure. Come on. Um, what if this isn't the way we embrace this as the method here? And yet many psychologists and therapists haven't even heard of Claire Weeks and Mm -hmm. some say CBT does not work for whole myriad of reasons. Okay. What if they are right and you are wrong? Just incidentally, I'm not saying that just a question. Um, what if this isn't the way? I spoke, uh, I spoke to my doctors and stuff about Claire Weeks and they'd never heard of it. I'm going to say that the vast majority of therapists have never heard of Claire Weeks. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's just put it out there. As much as we, as much as I admire her work, and many people in the group do, and it's helpful mm-hmm. to them, you're not going to encounter a whole lot of medical professionals or mental health professionals that know who she is. That's okay. Yeah. Though. Well, number one, she doesn't spend a shit ton of money on marketing and that. Like, ask them exactly. if they've heard of Barry McDonough or Charles Pissing Linden. Right. You can bet, bet your life they, they've heard especially of Especially in the UK, they've probably heard of Charles Linden, where he's yeah, huge. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, understand why why have they not heard of Claire Weeks? That is not an invalidation of what she says. So there's mm-hmm. two things going on here when, when it comes to Dr. Weeks. Like, number one, she was never – there was never a marketing machine behind her. There's still not. So uh-huh. – the organization Clear Weeks Publications is run by two people, like her niece and grandniece, like mm-hmm. in Australia on their own, like doing what they can do. They don't have a marketing team and a publishing company and, you know, SEO experts and mm-hmm. podcasts. They don't have that. So it stands to reason. And she did her work way before an era where that ever happens, yeah, which is yeah. fine. But the other thing to remember is number one, that doesn't invalidate what she said. Number two, None of what she says, she invented. Like, Mm -hmm. she just took those, she's essentially talking about graded exposure, graduated Mm -hmm. in vivo exposure. She is using all the concepts that come along with cognitive behavioral therapy. And you'll find names like Beck and Ellis. And if you're trained in psychology, you've studied that, you'll know these names. Like, these are the fathers of CBT, behavioral therapies, and their variants. Like she just applied those concepts to this particular problem 
a panic mm-hmm. disorder and agoraphobia. Mm-hmm. So in a time when there wasn't a lot of means to communicate this to the general public. So, you know, this was stuff that was studied in universities and labs and papers would be written about them. And only other psychologists and behavioral scientists would read the papers at conferences. There was no mm-hmm. internet. There was no, there was barely TV and radio in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. And so she didn't invent this. So the Claire Weeks method is not something that she came up with out of the blue. Mm-hmm. She essentially applied those, the tenets of cognitive behavioral therapy mm-hmm. and, and packaged them in a really I, great way. I think for later. Another, th- another thing yeah. to think about is instead of asking all these doctors and professionals if they've heard of Claire Weeks, don't ask yeah. them that. Ask them if they've heard about like acceptance and stuff like that. Because right. Like the author may not be well known, but exactly. the method is. The like, method is. The because method. everybody else is rehashing the same stuff. It's all the same stuff. And so she may have been one of the early people in the late 50s and the 1960s yeah, yeah. to package this information for, for lay uh-huh. people, for like regular people to use as almost self help, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she said it really clearly in a, in a good voice. Mm-hmm. But just because a therapist hasn't heard of Claire Weeks does not disqualify. And I know Robin, like if Robin is watching this, I know that's been a thing for her. Like my Claire, my therapist never heard of Claire Weeks, so she must not yeah, be yeah. a good therapist. No, most therapists have never will tell you they won't. They've never heard of her. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It does not validate the method, and it doesn't mean that that's a bad therapist. So Rebecca goes on to say that some say that CBT does not work for a whole myriad of reasons. And then Adam had actually mentioned in his question, "Is this method of acceptance based on evidence?" So this is the same question now. This is the CBT question. I can answer it. In the U.S., I think you could probably answer it better in the U.K. Sadly, we don't have experience in other countries, although I will tell you that in Australia, they seem to be very keen on this. And in Norway, where Ingvild lives, they mm-hmm. seem to be very keen on this. So they are a little bit ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. In the United States, if you are going to practice, a, be a, a, a therapist, you have to have a doctorate, a Ph.D. You can either be a Ph.D. in psychology Mm-hmm. You can be a psychiatrist, which makes you a medical doctor who went through medical school, mm-hmm. or you can have a master's degree in social work and be a clinical social worker, which is a, means there's levels of supervision above you and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Some of the curriculum is based on behavioral psychology. Some of it is based on Freudian and analytical stuff mm-hmm. or, or things like Carl Jung's personality archetypes. So you're learning a bunch of different things. And so in the end, if you go on to the PhD level and you could be doctor something, a clinical mm-hmm. psychologist in the U S you may have chosen, maybe you believe that Jungian archetypes are the, are the answer to all problems. Maybe you believe that Freudian. Yeah. Well, I'm just, you know, these are things, these are, this is the answer to this question. Maybe mm-hmm. you believe that Freudian, you know, psychodynamics are the answer to all problems. You yeah, haven't yeah. been hugged as much, as much as a child, you were neglected as a child, not reinforced. So therefore you have mm-hmm. this disorder in later life. Or maybe you are a behavioral therapist. Not so. Mm-hmm. There's so many different variants of this. Yeah, it's like yeah. a doctor. You might be a neurologist, a urologist, a cardiologist. There are specialties, and mm-hmm. so somebody, a therapist who is a, a Freudian analyst and believes in psychodynamic methods of treatment, yeah, will tell you that anxiety comes from that. We're going to dig down for two years until we find the root cause of this trauma that you experienced in childhood. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how we will fix you. They will tell you that CBT is not the thing. That's how uh-huh. you do it. And I think it just depends on what the person's, you just have to find a therapist who says, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a behavioral therapist. Uh-huh. Now, to answer, and that's why, that's why many doctors have never heard of this. They just don't, they didn't travel in that circle. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So here in the U.S., we have an entire, we have professional organizations full of cognitive behavioral therapists, mm-hmm. and that's what they do. You just have to find that person. So if your car needs a new transmission, you need to find a transmission shop, mm-hmm. right? If your sink is broken, you need to find a plumber. You don't just call somebody to fix your sink. You need somebody who has, right. You need somebody who looks at your sink and says, this is a plumbing problem. I am a plumber. I will fix this. So it's the same thing. Just because there are doctors and therapists that don't know about it doesn't, doesn't mean it's an invalid thing. It is Mm -hmm. a valid thing. So Adam, and I'm just rambling while I know while you're sitting there, which is, I'm sorry, jump in any time. Chewing gum. That's fine. Um, I have a mint. Yeah, it's all good. I'm just, I have a mint. So to answer Adam's question, is this based on evidence? Yes, it's based on absolutely decades and mountains and mountains of clinical evidence 
in the behavioral sciences focused on cognitive behavioral therapy that this is the very best intervention we have, including mm -hmm. medication. So when you look at outcomes over time, people who are involved with meds alone, combination of meds and CBT and just CBT and its variants alone, Cognitive behavioral interventions are as effective short term, more effective long term than medication. It is there is not even a question. And most well versed therapists who are analysts, psychodynamic, you know, or personality type people, they if they are well versed and stay abreast of what's going on in their field, they will even have to tell you that mm -hmm. most of them. And remember that they are making a living. So they do not make more money if they tell you that they are not the therapist for you. But what I have found over time is that analysts and other therapists will say, oh, yeah, I can help you, even when they know that behavioral interventions are the yeah, most yeah. effective way. Uh -huh. Whereas behavioral therapists are more likely to come, to tell you, yeah, I, you know, I, I know you're having problems with your mom over what happened when you were 11. I'm not a good choice for you. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. understand that. Like, be behavioral therapists will admit that they're not the one or will be honest about it. But many other therapists will will not say that. Mm hmm. And Let's sometimes have some money. Let's have some of your money first, then we'll talk about I, it. I think we have to acknowledge that to a certain extent. Sometimes yeah, yeah. it's a money thing, uh -huh. you know, like they don't make money by now. And they, and they, but in their hearts, I'm not saying that they're just money grubbing scammers. They believe that they can help you with this. Uh -huh. and, and, and I, I find it in many instances, absolutely reprehensible that I personally know people who have been with the same therapist for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. still cannot go out the door themselves. How that person can make you sit in their office for 40 minutes every week and take your money or your insurance company's money, whatever it is, yeah, yeah, and talk about whatever it is you talk about in that session, and you are no better off in your agoraphobia than you are a year ago, mm -hmm. is beyond me. That is, to me, unethical and really is a violation of almost their professional code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Like at some point, that person has to stop and say, okay, Maybe you do have some issues that we need that I can help you with, but obviously I'm not helping you with this problem. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to get somebody else involved. Yeah, yeah. But many people will not do that. And I don't understand that. So yes, there's mountains and mountains and mountains of clinical evidence here that says the behavioral approach is the most effective approach in dealing with an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And the disorder is defined by that root cause of the anxiety is decoupled. And now your anxiety is caused by your anxiety. Uh -huh. So if you don't want to get in the car because you're afraid of having a panic attack in the car, you have an anxiety disorder. If, if crowds just make you anxious, but you still go in them, you do not have an anxiety disorder. You just don't like crowds. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I could talk about this all day long because this is my this is my jam. And I think it's so important when people say, like, well, maybe this is the wrong way. I, mm -hmm. call, call me pedantic if you want. This pedantic. is the right way. I, I'll accept it. This is the best way. This is the best yep. way. But again, when we're talking about these disorders like panic disorder and agoraphobia, we're not mm -hmm. talking about low self-esteem issues or trust issues. Like those are other issues that people yeah, yeah. often have in conjunction with these disorders. Those are different. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, we, I, when I, I did my video with Monique about past trauma, trauma is different. That's true. But, but, you know, in the end, the disorder where you learn to be afraid of how you feel, there's there's no better approach. There isn't. Mm -hmm. And Claire Weeks just, I think, said it very well. It was very approachable in, in the way she said it. That's yeah, all. Yeah. The other thing that I would mention, you know, in terms of Adam's question about, like, is this, you know, doctors are only, what did he say? Um, I almost recommend antidepressant tablet instantaneously, which is true yeah, yeah. here, too. Uh -huh. Like if you go see your general practitioner here in the United States and tell them you're having panic attacks, most likely that doctor is going to want to get out of his prescription pad and just uh -huh. say, here's a benzo for when you panic and here's an antidepressant. It'll take two weeks to work and you won't panic. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you think that is? It's, it's the fastest way. Yeah, yeah. It's the fastest way. Maybe it's yeah, the cheapest yeah. way. I don't, I don't know. And I, I think medicine is a business and it's a, even if you have socialized medicine like you guys have, it's still a business. Like, the British government is paying for that and must manage. Yeah. Isn't it one of, one of the biggest, biggest industry in the world when it pharmaceuticals? Pharmaceuticals. Yes. And here's the thing. So even, and we don't have to get into a healthcare debate because please don't start a healthcare debate in the thread. Oh, I was just about to. 
But like, so here's two different things. We have for profit medicine here in the US, which I think many people find reprehensible. And we could talk about that if we wanted to one day. And mm -hmm. you have socialized medicine or in Canada or in, a, I think Australia has socialized medicine where everybody just gets healthcare because we don't leave people without healthcare. And that's great. But the pharmaceutical companies, are not you socialized. Pay. Yeah, you right. still pay, pay for medications. <laughs> in, in any country, whether they're in the US, where it's profit is like religion here, mm -hmm. or they're operating in the UK with a socialized medicine system, even mm -hmm. though the government of, the, of, of Great Britain is, is the British government is paying for your health care, so, somebody has to pay GlaxoSmithKline for those pills. Uh -huh. and so in the end, I think the pharmaceutical company exists outside the bounds of whether it's for profit. Or, they are for profit no matter what country they're mm -hmm. in. Yeah, and, yeah. and if you really want to know, in the UK, they charge less for that tablet than they do in the US because in the US, they can. The market mm -hmm. lets them charge more. Mm -hmm. So the, the pill costs more in the US than it does in the UK or in Canada or in Australia because they can here. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I think if you are a doctor, you, that's what you know to do. You write, you write a prescription and you give somebody a pill that you are told will fix them. And, yeah, and, they, and they have so many people. I was going to say customers. <laughs> Doctors have so many customers coming well, in. They have so many people go through the door, like they've got to get these people out. Like right. They can't sit and explain the ins and outs of CBT and how it works. That's, and this, that's that. exactly right. And then there's so many, like the numbers are staggering, the amount of people that are being referred. Like the waiting lists are already crazy off the charts. For CBT. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think what you're running into there is the same problem we have here in a way. Like there's a certain, there's a limited number of therapists that specialize in mm -hmm. that. But I think yeah, yeah. in your system where it doesn't matter. Everybody gets access to healthcare, which is great. It's not mm -hmm. bad. It's a good thing. I, I, I hear so many stories of people in the UK that go through CBT that was not really CBT. Like you could tell, you know, I was talking about Holly, talking Holly about this the other day. Mm -hmm. Like you could almost tell this person, I think wants to help. They've chosen to be in that profession. Like they yeah, don't, yeah. they're not making it up, but like their CBT training was like, you know, they did a week retreat where they, they had to go through the CBT yeah, yeah. module to be uh -huh. approved by the NHS, and now they're doing CBT, which is not a thing. This fucking fly is going to get it. Did you get him? Yes. Nice. Save that, man. That's free protein right there. <sighs> <laughs> there I, do, I feel like I do that every It seems episode. that way. Yeah. You, you, there's a fly buzzing you every single time, man. Got a fly infestation. I'm going to have to start taking the trash out, and I? That's what it is. <laughs> more than, I have to more sweep than the maggots to the months. side. I mean, yeah, you yeah. just... Yeah, just push them away. It's all good. God, so I think it's a big topic. I could just rant on it, which I have now. Yes. Um, but I think that's why. What if this is the wrong way? It's the mm -hmm. right way. Mm. And every time we see somebody, you know, come in the group in January crippled and convinced that they can't do it and it's too scary, they'll never be it. And in June, they're out and living life and like yep. post nothing but success stories and helping people. It's the way. Trust me. It's, mm -hmm. it's the fucking way. Um, it's the first time you've swore today. No, I've been really good. I've been well trying done, to like man. censor myself a little bit. Yeah. I think, it, yeah. So, so there you go. And I think um, that you know that's pretty much the questions. I see somebody else answer ask something. Let me look. Yeah, yeah. Joycey Jane. Joycey. Uh, claustrophobia affects me a lot. I always need to sit on an end seat. Well, it can be really difficult. Claustrophobia is its own phobia, for uh -huh. sure. And I'm sure that there are people who have panic disorder, agoraphobia, and claustrophobia at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not an expert on claustrophobia, but my guess is that you would treat it the same way you do any simple phobia. Yeah, yeah. Right. So like claustrophobia. Exposure. Right, exposure. So I think if somebody who's claustrophobic like would work up graduated mm -hmm. exposures mm -hmm. little by little. Mm -hmm. So your brain learns that, oh, I can be in this place and be safe. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's probably the same thing. Let's... How long have you been going for? I don't even know. You have the recording, so I'm not sure. An hour and 15. Just Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's a long time. It's fine, man. <laughs> I guess we should probably wrap it up. I what? was going to talk a little bit about Rebecca's video and the tree post, but I don't know. Maybe we should do our own. Maybe we should do another one on that one. Yeah, do it. Just keep going. Yeah, I was going to mention Blue Monday as well, because that was last week. Blue Monday? We're talking about Blue Monday. Yeah. I, used well, to I, just went, I wondered what you thought of it, like the 3rd January and... The third Monday in January, sorry, is or is apparently Blue Monday, the most depressing day of the year. Yeah, and we have some kind of crazy stats that come up every year too. Like it's the number one day for like heart attacks in the U.S. That's right. Yeah, like I, and I don't even know. Like nobody can ever cite. Like where does that source come from? You know, it just because apparently it was started by some holiday company. The term Blue Monday years Seriously? ago. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallmark was, or something. They were trying. No, no, like travel. Oh, holiday. oh, I get. Yeah, it. yeah. I get yeah, away because that's when you need to book your holiday because that's. It's in the winter. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're in the southern hemisphere and you're roasting right now, but I get it. Blue Monday. It's the most depressing. The third Monday of January. Is that what it is? Yeah. The, I didn't. I didn't see the specifics. Is the most depressing day of the year? The third Monday. I, I think a lot of people would say that the Monday after New Year's or whatever that first day back is from holiday, mm-hmm. the holiday break is the most depressing day of the year. That kind of used to be for me. Bollocks. Blue Monday. I, 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 mean, I did a video once called Blue Monday Bullshit. So that's my take. That's, on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need to know about it. Blue Monday Bullshit. Yeah. I think a lot of people, I thought, you know, I did, I kind of skimmed that a little bit. I saw the Blue Monday discussion. Yeah, it's just everywhere. I thought people were talking about having the Monday blues. I used, the Sunday blues. I used to get that. Mm. I used to get mm. that the worst way. Mm-hmm. Like Sunday afternoon, I was ready to like just kill myself. Not, I'm joking. <laughs> joking with that. But like <laughs> by Sunday afternoon, because it was that mm-hmm. like, oh God, tomorrow. And I, even when I was a kid, oh, I got to go back to school tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Even when I was a kid. And then I go, oh, I got to go back to work tomorrow. Like Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I used to get that in the worst way. So I thought that that's yeah, pretty late. Yeah. But it, it kind of like, so does that mean that from Tuesday onwards, we're all going to feel better? Like, that's the problem that it causes. Uh, uh, right. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. I think the answer to that is don't let anybody tell you how you're going to feel. Like, yeah, yeah. You determine that for yeah. the most part. Thank you. Or, or at least how you're going to react to that. So it's not a bad thing. Should we, Go let's on. Talk, you want to talk about the Rebecca's tree thing? Video. Rebecca's yeah, yeah. video. Rebecca posted yeah. what I think was an excellent video. And. And I commend her on that. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for sharing that. I think this is a huge thing. And, and it was an accident. Somebody posted while I was traveling, and I took a few minutes to respond, and I wrote my little post about hiding behind trees. Mm-hmm. Go look, I guess, if you haven't looked. <clears throat> and essentially, it's the question that comes up all, all the time. Like, okay, I've decided to accept my anxiety, surrender to it, I'm doing my exposures. Why do I feel worse? Mm-hmm. And you went through this. You went through this. It weren't long ago, was it? Maybe a month ago. We, we were more. talking about it. It was around mm-hmm. the, it was around Christmas time, I think. In yeah, December, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, why do I feel worse? And the answer to that is, you are now you are abandoning the nuts and bolts we talked about before, safety uh-huh. behaviors. You are now abandoning avoidance and safety behaviors. Yeah, and yeah. so the analogy that I wrote about in my little post was, every time the wind blows, you duck behind a tree to get out of the wind. Mm-hmm. And then when you decide that you no longer duck behind that tree, you will then feel the full force of the wind. The tree uh-huh. has been hiding. You've been hiding from the wind, right? So when you step out from behind the tree, suddenly the wind, which was the same wind that it's always been, will yeah, feel yeah. much, much, much worse mm-hmm. because you have abandoned your safety, the tree. Mm-hmm. And Rebecca was so honest and genuine about how that – what I wrote impacted her, not because I wrote something amazing, but it made <laughs> her look and say like – holy mackerel, like I've been, you know, hiding behind trees for yeah, years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think many of us who are in these situations could probably relate to that. Like, yeah, yeah. how much time have you spent hiding behind trees that you don't even know you're hiding behind? Uh-huh. And I think people who live with these disorders, especially people who are agoraphobic, um, engineer a life that they can manage to live. And there's always a yeah, so yeah, definitely. Plant trees all along the way that they can duck mm-hmm. behind. Mm-hmm. And yes, when you stop hiding behind trees, the wind will smack you in the face harder than it usually does. And it is that is not a mystery as to why you suddenly feel worse because when you truly identify the trees that you've been hiding behind, and we talk all metaphorically here, and stop yeah, yeah. hiding behind them, you are now making real progress and it will feel like shit. I can vouch for that. It felt bad, didn't it? Like you, yeah, yeah, it was you rough, man. a few times, like yeah, I'm yeah. even at home and I feel badly at home. What's going on here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how did that, in the end, you know, how did it resolve? I mean, do you feel like it's you? It's just time, it, I guess. Is it primarily resolved for you, do you think? Are you still like sitting at home feeling like crap? Uh, not as often. Right, you okay. Still get it. Like it's still the same <laughs> sort of force. Like the wind hasn't died down. It's just right. that I, I don't really pay as much attention to it. That's probably the difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think it's so, so, so important to understand. I'm not saying I've got bad wind, by the way, if that's what people (laughs) think. You know, it's funny. The wind hasn't died down. It's still (laughs) in the air. And And I think you guys use wind slightly different than we do. (laughs) And I had to glean that from listening to Rebecca talk about, like, no, I'm not talking about that kind of wind. I'm like, oh, I get it. I understand what she's saying. Ah. Yeah. But, um, 
Like the breeze. I don't know, guys. Sorry, I didn't mean to make yeah. a British like gastrointestinal joke. But uh, I, I think it's a thing. Like another one. It's the win. That's what he is. <laughs> Someone texted me to tell me about it. It's windy Probably. out here. Probably. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think it was important to throw this in here. I'll probably make my own video rambling about it, to be honest with you. But for anybody who's watching now, like, when you feel like, why have I accepted this, yet I feel worse? Two things are going on. Number one, you think that when you accept and surrender, it'll all go away quicker yeah. than it really does. And it won't. It's a long process. And number two, like, if you really are diligent about this, and you really look at all of those safety behaviors and avoidance techniques that you have developed in your life, uh -huh. You will probably be surprised at how many there really are. I like, think the, the analogy is perfect. Like I, I was sitting here thinking about it when you were just saying it. And that's exactly what it is. Like when there's no tree. You're right. Just, you're feeling it. You feel the way. It's, of course, a, of course you the are. same wind that has always been blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and just it is, that you're not hiding from it. You're anymore. not hiding from it. You step out into the wind yeah. and you will feel that full force. And uh -huh. what will happen when you don't hide behind the tree? Your face will start to get cold. Your skin mm -hmm. might get a little dry. You know, yeah. if you had to walk into the wind all day long, it would be physically taxing. It would wear you out a little bit. So all of the effects of wind, negative though they may be, but not dangerous, mm -hmm. you will now have to feel. And I think when you experience this, like I've changed, I, when you have truly, put it to you this way, when you've truly changed what, you have, what you're doing and you're going uh -huh. into the field and you're not avoiding anymore and you're going toward it and you're saying, just kill me, bring it on, and you start to really start to move forward, mm -hmm it is probably likely that you will start to feel worse at first. Yeah, Consider definitely. that an indicator that you are doing it right. Yeah, yeah. Not because this is a process that's built on suffering. Like, no, this is not no pain, no gain. There's not none mm -hmm. of that bullshit. It means that you are, you're stepping out from behind all those trees that you used to hide behind all the time. I think that's probably the, the, the single thing that makes people stop trying. That's what knocks people's confidence, motivation. Right. Right. That that is the that's the key to it. Is understanding that when yeah. you step out, you step out into the freaking headwind. It gets rough. And you it must does get rough. Feel it. <clears throat> right. And yeah, you there's must no other way around it. Again and again and again. That's the only way that your brain will learn that this wind is not killing you. It, it's okay. But it's about persisting through them those initial stages. That's the key moment. You're probably you, right. Yeah, yeah. When you realize or you perhaps don't realise that this is the right way because I feel worse. Right. But that is, that is the right way. And it's that's it, the key. Is, it it makes you, going. yes, and it makes you realize. And I think if you have not seen, first of all, again, I said, if you're not in our discussion group, you should join it. And if you have not watched Rebecca's video, just search for Rebecca Mansell and look at the video she posted. It's, mm -hmm. it really, I know I've, I've said it a couple of times. I, it's really so good because you need to stop and look in the mirror oh, and me. say, I will not. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I was on freaking filming. <laughs> My apologies. That's quite all right. Um, I think you really need to, at some point, look in the mirror and say, like, Rebecca really took a, a – she took that moment of reflection and say, oh, man, I'm doing this. I'm really uh -huh. doing this. And that's not accusatory. I'm not saying, like, you feel this way because you did it. I'm just saying this is the way these it's disorders – It's wrong now. Every, all hell's breaking loose. The phone's ringing, flies. Should, we'll let it ring out. That's fine. Should answer it. Hello. Do you want me to? No, that'd be my dad. Is that an actual landline? Yeah, yeah, but the only person with the number is my dad. <laughs> That's always <laughs> so, the way. <laughs> that is always the way. I might, if I get rid of that line, my grandma can't call me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not an emergency. Yeah. Oh, well. Um. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point. You will feel badly when you do these things, but that's the point. Like. Uh -huh recognize that you have engineered your life so that you do not feel badly. So when you when you leave all those things behind and you intentionally fail badly, you will feel badly, but you must mm -hmm. do that. That is how you learn that feeling badly is not dangerous and you don't have to be afraid to feel that way. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go. I'm out. Sweet. <laughs> oh, my <mic> drop. <laughs> my drop. <laughs> Beautiful. Brilliant. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, an hour and a half is a long time. Yeah, we're almost there. We're a minute, a couple of minutes off. Yeah, it's a long one. It's a long one. I think we did that last time. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. What else? Anything, Anything else? else? No, I'm, I'm trying to done. think. It's all, it's all fine at the minute. Yeah, you're, you're, 
you're moving and grooving. It looks like. Yeah, I'm just. I feel the same, but I'm not bothered. <laughs> That's it. You you'd mentioned a plan, something that you were thinking about doing with Ben. When I was just yeah, yeah, we're going. No, that that other uh, thing. Plan. Yeah. yeah. So we, we've spoke about it because we've got some big plans. But I don't. I didn't know if you wanted to say it or not. You could. You don't have to say it. Yeah, I'll say it. Like we're talking about maybe flying from Birmingham to Edinburgh, which is like the middle of England to Scotland. Like that maybe a, how long does that take? Maybe an hour and change or so. I have no idea. No okay. idea. Yeah. But that would be. That would be awesome. Because we were. It was because when you were on the flight, weren't it? That's when. And yeah. I was, um, yeah, we're talking. Dreading, dreading that first freaking flight. Yeah, but could you even imagine that you're in a place where you're considering doing that now? Nope. I, I couldn't. I was thinking about this the other day, like in that freaking sports shop. Like, go back however many years you want. That's not something that I would do. Yeah. Like, going to the pub for lunch with a freaking guy that I've only met once, like Ben. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just weird progress. Good but you don't, are... you don't really yes. notice. You don't notice how much progress you're making. That's the thing with me. Like, I'll. I'll just go. I went and put fuel in the car the other day and didn't even think about what I was doing. It was just like, this isn't a challenge. Yeah. But wait a minute. Two months ago, I'd have been sitting at home thinking about this for hours. You just did it. Uh, yeah. See, this is the way. Say it again. <laughs> this and, is the um, way. Yeah. yeah that it's would be a big deal. But I, I, I think the reason why I kind of prod, prodded you to see if you wanted to bring it up is that's another good indicator. Like, what are the what are the things you are thinking of doing next? Like, you're you're actually considering the idea of going, getting on a flight yep. and flying to Scotland. I mean, that's freaking amazing. Want to go and watch a footy match? Soccer? Yeah, you guys. Yeah, that's yeah. got to happen. Yeah, Probably whatever. Watch Birmingham. Oh, when they go and play in Edinburgh, that would be awesome. No, no, just go and watch Birmingham at Birmingham. Like, oh, go to the okay. And actually oh, do watch that. Again. Okay, I thought yeah. you were about it. There'd yeah. be like nearly thirty thousand people there. Like, that's a bit of a big deal. <laughs> just a bit. It it is, but but you build, but you know how to build that. You don't just do it like you you build that. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, because they they have like reserve games, yeah. or like un, under twenty threes or something. So I'll probably go and watch one of them first. There'll okay. perhaps be like a couple of thousand people, maybe. Yeah, like, sure, sure. That'll be my first step. Or just getting into crowds more into the city center when it's more crowded. Blah 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 blah. But you know how you know what to do. Be done. Well, the, right. because the the thing is, like, come June, when. Tina is supposed to be coming over. In fact, I'll say that on the video, then she's got to. <laughs> oh, no. Now you're committed, Tina. Yep. Get she's, your ass over here. Throwing down the gauntlet. Yep. So early June, she's supposed to be coming to the UK, but I've got to go and meet her at Heathrow Airport, which sure. is like one of the busiest in the world. It is a huge. Apparently. Airport. Yeah. And that's in London. So I've got to drive there on my own. And like, she, obviously, she's got to fly freaking 10 hours across the water. Whatever. Sure. It's, so I'm it's, I'm worse yeah. than her. <laughs> it's, not that, it's about a six-hour flight or so. <laughs> oh, but she's in Florida, so yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm building up to. Like that's my motivation. That's. Yeah. I'm using. I'm just pushing on. Just but doing that, whatever. And the way you'll do that is before she ever arrives, you're, you'll you'll go to London a few times. I'm sure. I know. <clears throat> yeah. Like that won't be your first trip to London. You're, no. You're no. You know, you know it's it's up now, so that's cool. Exactly. And then the big goal is like, I want to come visit you, man. Oh, how, that how would be so How many years have we talked about that? Well, at some point, either I'm going to end up there or you will end up here. I'm going to come to you. That's I'll true. You. you, yeah, you get your ass to the U.S. You, you know yeah. what? Even if it's to Florida, which you know, I would, I would totally get that you would choose to go her, to her before me. Mm -hmm. I would choose her over me too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Tina. <laughs> I just had to make a stupid joke. But, uh, I would totally get that. But I would, uh, yeah. You come to the U.S. and I'll go wherever you are, and we'll we'll do that. That would be cool. It's gotta happen. It's but gotta at some happen. point, I do want to. I I really do want to come to the U.K. It's just yeah, yeah. I, I have many friends there now that I, I do want to meet, and and it's just a lovely place. So I want to go to Scotland. I'm all about Scotland. I'll take so, you to Scotland. Mate. Nice. We'll go. You, me, and Ben. As long as we can squeeze it into my four minutes of activity. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to ask the Google so you have Google in there. Hey. <laughs> okay. Google. How many days will it take if I only move for four minutes? Oh, I just woke up my phone. No, no, no. <laughs> don't. We don't want to know really. Can I can Alexa, shut up. Four minutes. <laughs> yeah. so, so good. All right. Well, I'll let you get rolling because you have four minutes of work to do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
<laughs> Trying to shoot <laughs> five minutes today if you can. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh-huh. If you if you have hung in this long, more power to you. Hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. Yes. I still haven't, I still haven't put any on my channel, but I keep getting asked when are me and you doing another video. So I might uh, upload. You should probably upload a couple. But I people, know I've lacked People are before. stealing my content. I said. This oh, that's before. right. That blows me away. <laughs> my palpitations video. Somebody has stole my video. They've re- re-uploaded it on their own channel and just slowed the audio down. So it sounds like I've had a stroke, basically. It's just me talking for seven minutes. Slower. Lower. It's nice. Gonna, when we hang up, I'm going to look now at my, my YouTube interface. What is it? The yeah, copyright yeah. tab? And see. Yeah, there's a copyright, and you can see if anybody's copying my stuff. There's a I, guy that's called That Anxiety Guy who's got loads of... <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's what you were saying, because we have 100% yeah, all matches of the videos that yeah, we yeah, yeah. both post, I know, yeah. which is so funny. I'm going to start hitting... I'm going to start sending you copyright infringement notices. <laughs> the video that you're in, and you yeah. get so stupid, they'll they'll give you uh, the yeah. mark, too. Check him off. Get yeah, me. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. So I'm going to look at that too. I did Thanks find once, I did on. w- once, by the way, that I found one of my, there's a video that I made while I was driving. And I found it on some other website. So I, I, I turned off external linking just because I was like, <laughs> that was years ago. That yeah. was years ago. Like, screw you, man. At least Not- credit. At least credit the provider. Uh, that's the thing. Yeah, I get it. All right, peeps. Thanks for hanging in there for yeah. this long. And I guess we'll see you on the next one. We certainly will. Good luck. Have a wonderful evening. Yes.